Hello, welcome to the EPG Pathshala program in linguistics. I am Pramod Pandey, Professor, Center for Linguistics, Jawaharlal Nehru University. I am the principal investigator of this project. We are now going to listen to a discussion of a module in the course Introduction to Linguistics. The coordinator of this course is Professor Amrita Valli, retired professor, English and Foreign Languages University, Hyderabad. The title of the module is Syntactic Theory and Language Change. It's been authored by Professor Amrita Valli. Listen to the discussion. Outline Introduction The Jesperson Cycle of Negation, Grammaticalization, Syntactic Change as Parameter Resetting, Other Approaches to Change, Summary. Introduction in the early years of generative grammar, there was a great emphasis on the synchronic study of language. This was because of the mentalist claim and the explanatory approach to language acquisition. A child learning language between the ages of 1 and 3 has no access to historical information about language forms. And the linguistic theory aims to characterize the notion possible human language, including past, present and future. Secondly, it was not readily apparent what theoretical tools and concepts are required to describe a dynamic system. Syntax itself was relatively a new field of study and historical linguistics appeared to concentrate on phonology, morphology and lexis. Traditionally, historical linguistics had been interested in the study of language history, in determining and exploring relationships between languages. These relationships could be genetic or diffusionary, that is, there could be language change through language contact. But historical linguistics is also the study of language change. Genetic relationships provide evidence of language change because languages from the same family typically show differences between them. The exploration of regularities and sound change in the Indo-European language family, for example, was perhaps the first attempt at a scientific approach to language. The Jesperson Cycle of Negation One widely influential textbook example of syntactic language change is in how languages express negation. In what is known as the Jesperson cycle, a negative element in language loses its negative force over time. A second element is brought in to reinforce the negative meaning and later the first element is dropped out. This change has been observed in Arabic, French and English among other languages. It was Jesperson who first described this phenomena and Dahl who coined the phrase Jesperson cycle. For instance, the current French negative expression nepas is commonly described as going through at least three historical stages. At the first stage, ne alone signaled negation. Some accounts derive ne from Latin non, etc. As ne weakened and began to lose its negative force, pass appeared to strengthen it. Today, negation in French can be expressed by just pass. There may also have been intermediate stages between stage 1 and stage 2 where either ne or pass were optional. Syntacticians have been interested in how the two negative elements are currently instantiated in a language. For example, the French negative elements are analyzed as occurring in the specifier position and the head position of a single phrase neg p. Arabic, which is dialects attesting the two negative forms ma and sh, has received a similar analysis. The historical data thus raise questions about how negation is syntactically represented at different stages and how the stages evolve from one to the other. 
Grammaticalization Grammaticalization has been described as the attribution of a grammatical character to a formally independent word or the increase of the range of a morpheme advancing from a lexical to a grammatical status or from a less grammatical to a more grammatical status. The following examples are quoted from Campbell. First, the verb say becomes a complementizer. It is widely recognized that the Dravidian complementizer Enri and its variants are from, are from the verb say. Thus, the term quotative was traditionally used to describe it. This complementizer is found in Dakhni Hindi as Bole. It occurs in Odia and Bangla as a second clause final complementizer like element Boli, Bole, whose properties have been investigated in generative grammar. Second, a main verb becomes an auxiliary like do, have, be in English. Third, positional verbs become copula. The Latin stair, stand, becomes the Spanish sta. Syntactic change as parameter resetting. Lightfoot was the first to argue that language change must be located in a restrictive theory of language and grammar. He took the birth of the English models as the paradigm case of language change and suggested that small incremental changes in the grammar lead to complications such that the language reaches the limits of markedness. The language then shows catastrophic change or radical reanalysis. We may say that language change occurs within the boundaries of universal grammar. Change is built in into the process of language acquisition because a child uses the primary linguistic data to arrive at a grammar which may not fully converge with the grammars assumed in the input. Roberts hypothesizes that a change takes place when a population of language acquirers converges on a grammatical system which differs in at least one parameter value from the system internalized by the speakers whose linguistic behavior provides the input to those acquirers. Syntactic change is parameter change and parameter change is change in features of functional categories. Robert discusses change in the properties of complementizer, tense, determiner, and light verbs. Roberts and Rousseau postulate that grammaticalization is local, upward, cyclic categorial reanalysis of individual items in the functional system. Other approaches to change Joseph points to the recognition of a field of inquiry that has come to be known as contact linguistics. While language contact has long been of considerable interest to linguistics, it is now coming of age as of subfield with the publication in recent years of several textbooks and surveys. It is true that contact linguistics is not just focused on studies of language change and particular histories, but is equally attentive to ongoing multilingualism on a social and individual scale. Nonetheless, the importance of understanding language contact for understanding language change is now widely recognized. Joseph also mentions three relatively new types of methodologies for studying language change. These are computationally based applications, variationist method, and attitudinal or ideological approaches. Computational applications includes the modeling of change, the mathematical testing of claims about frequency effects, relatedness, the role of chance, and the validity of tree phylogenies, the use of statistical tests more generally, and corpus-based studies such as those emerging from the study of the Helsinki Corpus of English or any other large annotated or tagged corpora 
that offer material on different stages of well documented languages you can refer to the works as shown under variationist's method i have in mind the studies in the paradigm of william lobov and related approaches the fine details of interspeaker and intraspeaker variation especially with regard to phonology are subjected to careful instrumental phonetic analysis and to various statistical tests using such programs as mentioned in the slide finally in what might be thought of an extension of the variationist interests in identity formation the role of language ideologies in guiding the speaker choices has come to be recognized as a potent force shaping the direction of change in as yet unpublished work joseph on language contact in the balkans involving phonology and the reaction of speakers to such contact has drawn the notion of language ideologies especially pertaining to a basic ideologically driven decision speakers make every day of where to draw boundaries between one's own language and the speech form of others a variety of approaches to language change have received renewed impetus in the last quarter century or so Syntactic theory has tried to embrace the dynamicity of the data from language change and account for it within the assumptions of universal grammar. In addition, computational methods and variationist approaches have emerged. Summary. Thus we have seen that a variety of approaches to language change have received renewed impetus in the last quarter century or so. Syntactic theory has tried to embrace the dynamicity of the data from language change and account for it within the assumptions of universal grammar. In addition, computational methods and variational approaches also have emerged. Thank you.